Hey folks, welcome to What's New, the Pete Alarmin Outdoors radio show, and I'm your host Pete Alarmin, and thank you very much for tuning in to us today. I hope everyone had a great Easter uh, with your family and loved ones, and hopefully not too much food or more food was consumed and lots of chocolate as well. Uh, I just want to remind everyone to sign up for our newsletter by going to our website at www.petalarmin.com and under the radio so radio show section. Enter the code for your chance to win some amazing prizes that have been donated by some of the great companies that we have on our show. This week on the show, we're honored to have an FLW touring professional who is ranked number 57 in the Bass Fan World Rankings, our 2006 FLW Tour Series Angler of the Year, a 2014 Railvac Series Angler of the Year, and the recent winner of the latest FLW Tour event on Lewis Smith Lake. Yes, I'm talking about Erie, Pennsylvania's one and only Dave Lefebvre. However, before we bring Dave on the show, let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back right after this. You're listening to What's New, the Pete Alarmin Outdoors radio show on WRVORadio.com. Gambler Lures, better baits, better fishing, better time on the water. We rely on offering you new and innovative products that perform across a variety of waters and species. We love what we do and we know you value your time outdoors. We're here to help you make the most of it. Gambler Lures has one goal, catching you more and bigger fish. Lose, building innovative products that are faster, lighter, and stronger. Lose offers anglers a line of bait cast reels from the BB1 speed spool to the new Team Lose Light speed spool. If spinning reels is what you prefer, Lose has those too. From the high speed speed and spool to the Team Lose Gold Spin, Lose has your spinning reels covered. Don't forget their line of rods and combos as well. All built with over 40 years of innovation and king on the same principles by which Lou Childry originally founded the company, building innovative products that are faster, lighter, and stronger. Welcome back. This week on the show, we are fortunate to have a former uh, FLW Tour Series Angler of the Year, the current Railvac Angler of the Year, and the 2015 FLW Tour event, Lewis Smith, a Lake Champion, Rapala Pro, Dave Lefebvre. Dave, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. Glad to be here. Dave, firstly, congratulations on your win last weekend on Lewis Smith. Uh, that must have been quite the, quite the rush. Yeah, you know, it was, you know, I haven't won in a couple of years. I guess back in 2012 was my last one and went a couple of couple of years without one. And in your intro there, you said I was 57 in the world ranking. <laughs> that's, that's encouraging. I need to pick that up a little bit. But, uh, uh, yeah, it felt real good to get, a, uh, I guess it was my, I think my third tour win. So, um, real exciting. I, I definitely needed it. Right on, and I mean, any time you can get a win is is uh, is a positive. But uh, you know, fishing the tour tour event like you've been doing for years now, and uh, I mean, you got you're fishing up against some of the best in the world, right? Yeah, and you know, I mean, not to say they're getting better, because I mean, the, the guys who have been around for a while, you know, the Jay Yellises and the Larry Nixons are still kicking butt out there. But um, you know, this day and age, you know, with all the social media and websites and google earth and everything that the, the younger generation has to study and get better in a, in a hurry are the things that you know that we didn't have you know 12 15 years ago so mm-hmm. the competition's definitely definitely stiff out there with the with all the good ones hanging around and, you know and, and then the new ones that are coming on board so 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 what's it like on, on tour what's what's the you know for a lot of anglers out there that are uh, either aspiring to become pro anglers or, or you know what I mean, that are, that are out there struggling right now. What's what's life like on tour? Well, I mean, you know, it's it's definitely it takes a a certain breed of person. You know, I'm I'm a I, I like traveling and I like seeing new places and obviously I love fishing. So I mean, what what I do is is still like a dream to me. You know, I still can't believe that I'm out there sitting there floating in the morning. You know, coincidentally, next to Dion Hibden or something, you know, you got to pinch yourself sometimes. But I mean, for for somebody that that really loves the outdoors and loves fishing and loves competition and uh, and that, I mean, it, it's it's, uh, it's 
a dream come true being out there. Um, but at the same time, it's a it's a definite. You know, it's a real job. It's all I do. It's all I've done for 13 or 14 years. And, um, you know, you have to treat it like that. You can, you know, lots of people in different professions love what they do. But um, at the same time, there's a lot of work involved. And I think the more you love it, the more the work becomes natural, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I, 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 I still love it as much as I did my rookie year, maybe more. And, uh but, but at the same time, you know, it's a lot of work, and I think you have to, you know, kind of have some structure and, and um, you know, dedication and and uh, a, a real solid work ethic to stay after it for so long. I would imagine the discipline level as well has got to be pretty high, is right? I mean, it's different for a guy that's got a 9-to-5 job is, you know, we get up in the morning, you know, we have our coffee or shower, whatever we do, kiss the kids goodbye, go, go to work. I mean, for you, for you guys... It must be different, right? I mean, because uh, there's work outside of tournament season. That you... I, I mean, I'd say it's, it's definitely different, um, and there's different phases. You know, like you said, the off season, and, and now we're just getting rolling for for 2015. But I'd say there's you know the off season and then the tournament season, and and um, there's a lot of different things. You know, with seminars and and um, you know promotion, and also the actual tournaments that um, that I kind of divide up, but I, but I, I mean I like kind of a structure and I kind of stick to you know stick to to um, well, I guess what would you say like a schedule? You know I try to treat it as though it, it, it was a job. And the mm -hmm. um, only thing I can say is you know the guys that really put a lot into it, we work a lot more hours than your typical job, and I think that's just because we love it so much. But um, yeah, eight-hour days are out the window when you're a pro fisherman, that's for sure. So that's that's uh, that's a good tip for for anyone that's aspiring to become a to to become a pro angler. You know, for for someone to be able to rub elbow, elbows with, uh, you know, as you mentioned with uh, uh, Larry Nixon, Jay Ellis, and that, and now you've got young guys that are looking to say, you know, I can't wait to uh, you know to rub elbows and bump boats with uh, with Dave Lefebvre, and and so there's. It, it, as you said, it's it's not really a nine to five. It's not an eight hour job. There's always, I mean, uh, off season like you said, you got sponsors, promotional work. You're also preparing for the upcoming season, right? I mean, I'm sure you guys are going through maps and what have you. And like, some, some guys do. I mean, part of my part of my system is I don't get geared up about the net, you know the tournament that's two months away. I don't even know what the tournaments are. <laughs> be honest. I mean, I'm looking at them one at a time. Um, I wouldn't start looking at, you know, our first one was at Toho. I wouldn't start looking at that until, you know, a couple of weeks prior. Um, I just know how I am. I start cramming, and if you're if you get on a roll and do all that research three months ahead of time, you know, there's just so much that um, you know you get so many ideas, and you want to live. You know, you want to kind of. Uh, expand off of the times you've been there before mm -hmm. and things like that so if you get too far ahead of yourself um, at least for me I know other guys are different but you start to get lakes confused with other lakes and you know things that maybe you read um, you know and then you get a bunch of paper or you know if you're taking notes and stuff like that you just have this huge pile of stuff so um, for me you know like at Smith that I started looking you know, a few days before I hit the road, and uh, just spend all my, you know, like before before I go to bed. You know, when the wife's reading or whatever, or the kids are watching a movie, I'll be kind of looking at that stuff and getting in the right frame of mind when it's the right time. If you know what I mean. Right, right. So, so like you said, it's like cramming just before an exam. Right, right. That's kind of my style. It was that's how I've always done it. You know, you mentioned exams even back in school. That's kind of how I was. I <laughs> off the last minute, try to keep it fresh. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, uh, and obviously it's worked for you. It's worked for you in the past. It's worked for you again last weekend. And, uh, you know, and we sure do hope that it continues to work for you in the future, as I'm sure it will. But, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you, that's the way you do it, and you've been successful with it. And there's other guys that do it, and they're successful with it. So, I mean, everybody's got to find their own little... Uh, uh, their niche, I guess, or what what works for them. Oh. So, 
Obviously, as, uh, you know, so there's tournament season starting. This is you've already guys got two under under your belts already. Let's go back to uh, to off season bit, and as you mentioned, you do sponsor works and whatever, and and uh, you know some of the sponsors you have are, are major role players and uh, major companies in the in the fishing industry. Um, what are some of your sponsors? Well, like, like you mentioned, I mean, that's, that's one of the keys. You know, my career could be completely different if I didn't hook up with the right ones early on. And, I, you know, I, I've had them pretty much my whole career for the most part. Um, you know, I added a few this year, which is kind of strange. I'll start with those. I, I You know, I've been pretty much set. And, and uh, this year in losing a couple of major key title sponsors, you know, due to some corporate crossfire, I guess you'd call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost Kellogg's, which I'd been with for ten plus years, and and Chevrolet for you know about eight years. So um, losing those, I just added a few of those secondary type sponsors, you know, just to kind of supplement and help out until I find a title, which I'm still looking for. But um, you know, the, the new ones I added are Quigley Four by Four, which took the place of of a diesel truck where we used to tow a camper around, and we had a suburban, and we towed a boat with that so we had two vehicles and i kind of condensed that into one the family's not going to be traveling with me this year so uh, i've got a, a quickly four by four van which is like um a lot of people don't even know they exist so it's kind of cool to drive it around and get all the you know the inquiries and stuff what is that and everything they've never seen one but mm-hmm. in reality it's the perfect vehicle for the outdoorsman, especially a pro fisherman with the room, it's just a, it's amazing. So um, that's that's the one I kind of um, real excited about as far as getting around the country, tra- traveling around in that thing. And then I added TH Marine, which is uh, kind of like the glue that holds everything together in your boat. Um, every, probably everybody has a TH Marine product, just like they have a Yamamoto bait somewhere. <laughs> it's neat. It, it's neat to be hooked up with them finally. And uh, using all that all their cool gear, and the other new one is Thirteen Fishing, which you probably know about being from up up north like me, and just kind of took over the ice fishing world. And mm-hmm. Hooked up with them through the ice stuff last year. I'm doing a lot of ice promotion um, during the off season now too, and uh, just the last couple of years. And um, hooked up with them and said, "Hey, man, this stuff is so good. Send me a rod and reel so I can check it out." And, and uh, last year I got to use some of their stuff, and this year they're one of my newest sponsors. So, um, you know, they kind of complement the the group that I've had for a long time, like with Rapala, Yamamoto, Ranger, Power Pole, Lawrence, um, that kind of stuff, Solar Bat, uh, the ones that I've had for, you know, for a really long time. So kind of had a little bit of excitement, getting the win for those guys, you know, out of the gates early is also important so um i'm excited i just i like the whole lineup and like you talked about you know getting or you know loving what we do um the promotion part that can be a a drag for some people and it can be you know more work than the actual fishing part but but, uh, the same thing goes into that you know when you love the sponsors and you're using the baits that they provide and that they put out there um makes it a lot easier it sure does, it, it, uh, you know, it, exactly. And it's easier to talk about something that you enjoy and use than to talk about something that you're, you know, you don't really. It's okay, but you, you know, you know, I, I know what you're trying to say. I'm not. Uh... It doesn't. It doesn't. Seem, it, it doesn't seem like work. Exactly. Now, a lot of times. A lot, a lot of times, and I'm not knocking it. You know, sometimes guys have to take something subpar to get the money that they need to do what they need to do. Um, you know, so. Um, that could have been me. I just was. Uh, I just worked harder at getting the ones that I really wanted early on, and it just happened to work out. So um, I guess I was blessed in that aspect. It didn't have to have to work out that way, but it just makes your job so much easier and so much more fun when you can just really talk about, you know, the products that they make, and you and you know them inside and out because those are the ones you depend on every day. Exactly. Exactly. G- continuing with the. Uh... What we'll do, Dave, is we're going to take a quick commercial break. Um, but when we come back, uh, as you mentioned, some of these, the, these new products or new sponsors that you have, and being staying with the title of our show and what's new, 
let's talk when we come back from the break let's talk about some of the new products that are going to that have helped you this year like to win on lewis smith and products that you're going to be using that are new for 2015 that'll help you throughout the rest of the season so uh what we'll do is we'll take a quick commercial break pay a few bills and you're listening to what's new the peter Lerman outdoor radio show on wrvoradio.com Livingston Lures. Livingston Lures is committed to bringing fishermen everywhere innovative, technologically advanced lures designed to flat out catch fish in fresh and salt water. With an exciting new line of crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, topwater baits, jerk baits, and wake baits featuring a unique sound and vibration technology. Livingston Lures is set to make some real noise across the fishing industry. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, you missed a great first half uh, of the show. But uh, we're fortunate enough this week to have FLW Touring Professional Dave Lefebvre join us. Dave, before the break, I had, you, you know we were talking about sponsors and how important they were and some of the new sponsors you have. And some of the old ones you have, like Rapala, PowerPole, Ranger, Yamamoto. Um, keeping in title with the show and what's new, what are some of the new products that these sponsors have that are helping you um, uh, succeed this year? Well, there's there's a pile of new stuff. I mean, you know, the industry's always on fire, especially early in the season, like right now, with mm-hmm. all the new stuff coming out. But, um, I mean, in the, in the most recent tournament, um, you know, I, I won it because of, of some of the newer stuff. One of them is that B- the BX uh, Waking Minnow. And, um, you know, when I realized I was going to be doing a waking, a wake bait type of deal, um, that, you know, that's the that's the only thing I had in my boat that first day, and, and thank God that I did. And then I was able to expand on it and use several different ones as the tournament progressed and the fish got tougher. But um, without that bait, brand new bait from them, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Some other things like, uh, you know, power poles have been out for a while, but there's still a lot of I get a lot of Facebook questions and uh, emails asking, you know, do I really need power poles or do I really need two power poles? You know, I fish deep, clear lakes and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, those 10-foot blades, that's what I use. Um, not too many people use the 10s. Most guys are using 8s. But mm-hmm. at Lewis Smith, you know, it's a deep lake. And uh, it's a place you wouldn't think power poles. You know, JT won the first one at Toho. Everybody needs power poles in Florida, but right. on a lake like, like that, you know, those were key. I would not have won. I mean, if you look at the results, my old buddy Clark Wendland finished, you know, just less than two pounds behind me. Um, without the poles, without those 10-footers, I wouldn't have won. So um, every little thing matters. And then the D-Shad, which I helped Yamamoto design, it's a fluke-style, you know, plastic sauce minnow looking thing. Um, I was using that until I ran out. Um, <laughs> you, you never think somebody sponsored by Yamamoto would run out of bait, but um, by day four, I was completely out of them. Um, but they're a D-shad. It's got a lot of salt, you know, that Yamamoto plastic, and I was super gluing that onto the back of a fish head spin. Um, so that's another fairly new bait. And uh, and lastly, I guess, you know, 13 fishing, um, you know, all their stuff is pretty much new. They're taking the world by storm, but at the same time, it's still new stuff. And the Concept E reels and the Omens and Envies, I mixed it up with both model rods. But um, that Concept E 7 3 to 1 reel, it's just uh, great, great, great stuff. I've been using Shimano for, gosh, since I started my career, way before I was a rookie. Um, way back in the club days I'm 25 plus years Mm -hmm. and uh, nothing has ever made me even think about getting rid of my Kronarx until I started using these 13 so um, every little every little bit matters you know when it's that close over a four day period uh, you you know you can't leave anything out which reminds me you know the sunglasses that I wear the way that I was fishing clear water I could see those shadows real faint you know almost like a smallmouth in the spring, you know, chasing a fluke or something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, I could see them, and it was real, real important to uh, to be able to 
identify something following from from far away. And I credit, you know, I wear amber lenses a lot, but on that last day I put the moss back ones on, and I mean, it was just, you know, it's a solar bat lens that you can't get anywhere else. It's kind of a green, dark green color, real good when it's sunny, and uh, crucial. I mean, I can, I can, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of time to think since that win. It's been crazy. But thinking back on some of those fish that I was able to see and had more time to trick them into taking the bait, uh, the sunglasses are definitely one of the keys to that style of fishing, too. And, and, and it's funny, just to, uh, I want to go back to the power poles because I know there's a, there is a lot of questions about that. But just to, to finish off with the sunglasses, it's so funny how we spend as anglers so much money on tackle and equipment and you know we always forget about obtaining quality eyewear and how important it is not only just for the protection of our eyes from the uv rays and all that but the ability as you mentioned to see the fish to to see not even fish like you said shadows it's it's so important what half the time yeah there was one i i believe i weighed it in because it was a three plus Pounder, but there was there was one that I just happened to see. I had already passed it, and we didn't have co anglers in the boat. And I actually looked back and saw it, and wondered how I passed it, and, and uh, you know, just the way the glare was and everything. You know, I credit that particular catch to the glasses. I threw back on it, and it just exploded on the bait as soon as it touched the water. So, um, super. You know. I, I always say that's the one thing that you don't want to skimp on. You know, you can use subpar anything. Right. Um, some of the best fishermen on earth are obviously not using the best boats, motors, equipment, rods, reels, baits, and they're still dominating. You know, there's good ones that are that are that would even tell you that. And um, as far as sunglasses go, that's one thing you just don't want to skimp on. I've been using these bats for. I don't know, 14, 15 years, and about five years in, I actually got sponsored by them. You know, they were one of those companies I just wanted. I wouldn't wear anything else. Right. Um, now I'm sponsored by them. It's, it's awesome. Um, I feel that they're the best out there, especially with those, you know, they got some inverted gradients and gradient lenses that are patented, and then that's moss back. You know, you just can't can't beat them. Hey, for your listeners, too, by the way, if anybody's looking at glasses, I actually wear prescription, um, which can get pricey. But um, my signature model of solar bat, as far as the RX goes, they're about the best deal you can get, and in my opinion, the best ones out there. Um, so I got a promo code. Anybody goes to solar bat, but solar bat's website um, can get 20% off. They don't even have to buy my signature series, any glasses. So if you're listening, want really good glasses, take care of your eyes. Um, you can go to my Facebook page and find the, the promo code, or if you've got a good memory or a pencil while you're driving, um, it's DBAT15. Just enter that at checkout, and you get 20% off whatever glasses you pick. Well, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that with our listeners. I mean, uh, there's a good opportunity there for, and, you, you know, you heard it firsthand that it's 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 a crucial point. Uh, Unfortunately, we are we're kind of really running out of time. So very quickly, Dave, going back to the power poles, we got about thirty seconds. Um, the power poles. You mentioned the blades, and most people think of the power pole. They think of the you know it's a it's a folding and it's basically a stick. But there's attachments you can get to the power poles because, as you said, it's ten feet. But if I'm fishing at twenty feet of water, uh, working a drift, so how's the power pole going to help me? Uh, well, I mean, they, they slow you down like nobody's business, even without, they make some accessories, you know, some wing things, I can't even remember what they're called, I used to put them on at Lake Erie last year, um, but you don't even need those, just putting them down, the resistance is unbelievable, I, I'd say it cuts your speed in half, um, but what I was doing was just fishing the backs of those pockets and putting them down long before I got into 10 feet of water, and when they hit the bottom, I knew where I was, and coincidentally, that's where I was catching all the fish, too, so... Right. Um, Super important. You can always back up, get close to the bank, and put those down to, to uh, you know, stabilize yourself and be a lot more quiet. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the whole point, especially when you're fishing that, well, 10 feet or but even shallower, to being as quiet as possible is, is, is obviously key. Dave, I really want to thank you. I know, you, you, you know you're you getting ready to get out on the road again and get back at it. 
Uh, I want to thank you for taking time away from your busy schedule to chat with us today. Uh, we do wish you all the best in the future. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep an eye on you and hopefully you continue to climb up that Bass Fan uh, World Ranking. All right. I appreciate it. Got a lot of good friends up in Canada. So I uh, appreciate you having me on and hopefully we get to talk again soon. I hope so too. Uh, folks, this episode was brought to you by Gambler Lures, Better Baits, Better Fishing, Better Time in the Water. Lou's building innovative products that are faster, lighter, and stronger. George's Marine and Sports, making fun a reality. Livingston Lures, the difference is clear. Mercury Marine, number one in the water. And Nitro Boats, driven to beat the best. It's our passion. Folks, take a kid fishing. They are the future of our sport and practice catch and release. And harvest only what you're going to consume. And also don't forget to take lots of pictures. Work hard and fish harder. You've been listening to What's New, the Pete Alarm Outdoors radio show on WRVORadio.com. And Lord willing, we'll talk to you again next week.